All right, so uh, week nine Friday, um, just, uh, just a few more days left. Um, week 10, then graduation. Okay, um, today we'll talk about SQL. <laughs> All right, um, so SQL, there's there's a lot you can say about uh, about SQL, um, and here we're going to just learn the very kind of basics of SQL, which will just be like writing a query to get information out of a database. Okay, so um, so a lot of companies use SQL databases, and um, and they exist as kind of like <laughs> This, it's, I guess they're relational databases where like you have these tables and you have these keys in the table and they match up with the other keys in another table and things like that and they form this kind of relationship and, and you extract information by writing a query, sending it to the SQL server which will be this computer dedicated to running this database and the server will send back the information to you in some kind of table. Okay, um, so with that said, <laughs> do not try to set up your own SQL server, okay? So, because uh, there's a very big difference between when you say, I want to learn SQL, okay? So, you know, you might, you might see in a job description, like, need, the applicant needs to know SQL and something like that. I'd say, unless, unless the job is database administrator, and it says you need to know SQL. Okay, I'd say the job when it says you need to know SQL is like you need to know how to write SQL queries, not know how to set up a SQL server. There's a there's a big difference. It's kind of like the difference between um, <laughs> can you uh, do you know how to search for things on Google versus like do you know how to build Google? Okay, it's a, it's a very big difference. Like oh, do you know Google? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I know how to search for things on Google, right? Do you know? Do do I know how to build Google? No, I don't know how to do that. Okay, um, and by the way, searching for things on Google is an important skill. Um, although it's you know now that we have these AI co-pilots and things like that, it's gotten um, you you can find a lot of information quite easily now. Okay, so anyway, uh, don't try to set up your own SQL server. Don't try to uh, uh, you know download MySQL and set it up. I mean, you can, but it's uh, a lot of a lot of learning, <laughs> okay? Um, as far as like learning how to write a few queries, I think it's uh, it's it's pretty pretty simple, okay? Um, here's a few I guess places that you can go for uh, practice. So one is this place W3 resource. Um, so you got to kind of endure all of the ads here. Um, but they have uh, they have different kinds of uh, databases, and you can see these are little diagrams of like different tables and their variables and how the tables are linked to one another. And then um, and then you can just you can try out some of these exercises. Um, and so you can say like, all right. Write a SQL statement that displays all of the information about all the salespeople, and uh, the sample table is salesmen, and, and so you know what's the solution there? Uh, the solution would be select star from salesman, and that will just get you uh, all of the things. So you know, just some some practice exercises there. There's another place uh, called SQL Fiddle, and um, except. Cookies. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, you know, here, let me. Just, oh, free to use. Okay, maybe. Well, hold on. All right, well, um, they changed the, the, the thing a little bit. But, but anyway, okay. Um, we will go ahead and we will uh, use. There is a data set, set called the Chinook uh, database. Um, and let me clear all of my outputs, okay? And we will just go ahead and use um, something called SQL Alchemy, 
which is kind of like a, a package that allows us to interact with SQL databases uh, from within Python. And then, um, you know, there's different versions of SQL, um, or SQL, I guess is, you're not supposed to call it SQL, but I think a lot of people do. But uh, there's different versions of it. You've got like uh, Oracle and, you know, MySQL and, and things like that. And then there's SQLite, okay? And that's just kind of this lightweight thing that kind of exists in Python and, and the databases themselves can just be packaged up in these single files. Uh, and so here we're going to open up a connection to uh, SQLite. Um, you might have to install SQL Alchemy if you try to do from SQL Alchemy import create engine and you get an error. Um, probably you have to do, um, you know, conda install SQL Alchemy or pip install SQL Alchemy or something like that to get it um, to get it going. Okay. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll import pandas. Uh, we'll import create engine from SQL Alchemy, and then we will uh, basically open up this uh, existing database. Um, if you're at work, okay, and your work has uh, a SQL server, then uh, you know the database administrator there will create some kind of account for you, uh, give you some login credentials, and then they'll show you how to uh, open a connection. To to the uh, to the database, okay. Um, but anyway, um, we're gonna uh, run uh, create engine, and so this is this is gonna open up a connection to the SQL database, which is just stored away in Chinook underscore SQLite, okay. But again, uh, you know, maybe in a business setting, it's not gonna be a little file that sits on your computer. It's gonna be a connection between your computer and some server that you know exists either somewhere else in the building or maybe in an entirely different building um, and uh, and you'll you'll get login credentials and everything like that okay but here we're just kind of um, doing something like that okay we'll also uh, I guess we'll Im import the inspector okay and uh, um, and so from the inspector we'll just get some basic information about the uh, the tables so one is we'll call uh, we'll say get the table names and uh, when you do this, we'll get uh, information, album, artist, customer, employee, genre, invoice, invoice line, media type, playlist, playlist track, and track. Okay, uh, let me just, I guess, give you some background information about this database. Uh, this database comes from, I don't know, uh, a decade or so ago where, uh, do you remember when you could buy, I, I think you still can, you, but you could buy like individual songs from like the iTunes store. Does that even still exist? You can. I don't know if anybody's who's bought a, an individual track in the last one year. No, we're talking about digital individual digital tracks. Has anybody done that recently? When was the last time you did that? I'm thinking we're all like maybe the last time we did it was like eight years ago maybe and you didn't have a credit card eight years ago so um, <laughs> so I don't know right everybody's kind of switched to streaming but but this database kind of comes from a time where you could buy individual tracks uh, and uh, and something like that so you uh, we have information about individual digital tracks and uh, and that would be like in the track thing. The individual tracks belong to albums. Um, albums are associated with artists, okay? Meanwhile, we also have um, information, uh, I guess, customer service information. Uh, and so whoever created the order, we have a customer table. Uh, we have information about each order. So an order might consist of multiple tracks uh, or multiple songs. And then, um, and then you might have, and then we also have some employee information. Okay, so it's kind of like if if you were running <laughs> the iTunes store circa 2008, <laughs> okay, um, and you were selling individual uh, song tracks and things like that, um, this was the thing. I don't know. I feel like, did you guys ever do this, or was this something um, that I don't know? If, as as time goes on, I feel like 
my students are getting farther and farther away from this this example. It'll be like, did you ever remember a time where <laughs> you had to uh, crank your car to start it or something? I don't know. Um, uh, what, what's something people did back in the... You had to crank your telephone? I see that they did that in like the movies, right? They, they, is that a thing? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so, some, something that we used to do. Um, you guys, do you have, ever have dial-up internet? Do you know what that is? Oh, man. Okay. So there was a time before Wi-Fi and... Uh, and um, no, okay, well anyway. Oh, I could tell you all kinds of stories from the early days of the internet where you had like um, <laughs> different protocols like <laughs> gopher and stuff. Um, okay, um, so anyway, uh, all right, let's just, let's just do some basics. The very, very basic command is select, okay? Uh, you use select to say, hey, I want these variables from a table. If you want all of the variables from a table, you say select star, okay? And then you have to specify which table, and so you use from, okay? So, so you kind of your your first thing will be like select this uh, all the variables from this table, okay? Now the convention is the SQL commands are written in all caps, and then your variable names will generally be written um, either in title case. Or uh, you know, however it's however it's done. Now, SQL is not case sensitive, so you don't have to do all caps. You don't have to write all caps select, but that's the convention. And I think it makes your queries, I think, easier to read, just because this is kind of how you're expecting it. Okay, so um, uh, the way you would run a command in uh, SQL or with SQL Alchemy is Technically, you have to do something like this. You do uh, connect to the engine, okay? I don't know why we call this engine, but this is um, basically uh, your connection to the database. And then once you have your uh, connection, you'll execute a, uh, a query. And so here we're gonna just say, select all the columns from the album table, okay? And then, um, so that will be the, uh, the results we're gonna fetch the results. So uh, queries are also uh, kind of, uh, generally a little bit lazy, and so we have to tell it, get the results, okay? And then, um, and then once we get the results, we'll store that into a pandas data frame. We'll make a data frame out of our results that we fetched, and then we'll close that connection, and then we'll go ahead and just print out the um, the results here, okay? And so here is the um, uh, album table, okay? I don't, do anybody, does anybody even recognize any of these albums? These are like older albums, okay? <laughs> okay, um, and so album ID, we have a number for album ID. Uh, we have the title of the album, and then we have the artist ID, okay? And, um, and so, for example, if you do For Those About to Rock, We Salute You, that is a album from the rock band ACDC. And I don't know, have we heard of them? Maybe? Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so here, here's, let's, let's do something um, a, a little bit... Uh, more interesting, so we'll go to we'll look at the employee table, and from the employee table, we'll select the um, the columns first name, last name, and title. Okay, and so here um, I'm going to do something rather than having to write all of these separate steps. Okay, I'm going to just uh, put the SQL command or SQL query in triple quotes. Okay, and then I can use a with. I can do with engine.connect as connection, and then we'll execute all of these things, and we can print the results. And so these are the employees in our thing, and I guess our, our company is pretty small. Uh, we have seven employees total. <laughs> Andrew Adams, Nancy Edwards, Jane Peacock, Margaret Park, Steve Johnson, Michael Mitchell, Robert King, and Laura Callahan. Okay, made up names, I'm pretty sure. 
All right. And then um, an even easier is pandas comes with a command called read SQL query. All right. So that, that just um, makes everything really easy. So all you have to do is you take your command. Um, you have to, there's, uh, you wrap it in something called text, which just tells uh, SQL, SQL Alchemy, like this is a text query. And then, um, and then you'll say, uh, read the query uh, to the connection and get those results. Okay, and so that's, so this is basically the form that, uh, that I'll be running all of my queries in. Uh, for the rest of today's lecture, okay? It's just that because pandas includes read SQL query, which makes everything super easy, and we're not going to worry too much about it. We'll just focus on, you know, what are the different kind of commands that we'll run. So we'll select first name, last name, and title from the, uh, the employees table. Okay, so um, here I'm going to say select all of the commands, okay, from the employee table, and... Um, and the new command that I'll introduce here is order by, and this is basically sort, and you can do uh, order by ascending or descending, okay? And so this is, we're gonna get all of our, uh, all the columns from the employee table. Um, and so we have employee ID, last name, first name, title, reports to, birth date, hire date, so on and so forth. And I guess we sorted this by birth date. And so here you can see kind of Oh yeah, this is an old database because Margaret Park was born 1947 and um, so that would make her 77 years old, probably not working anymore, probably retired back in 2009, <laughs> okay. Um, and then our youngest employee is Jane Peacock, 1973, that would make her 51 today. She would have been uh, 30, 34 in 2007. I'm just making up. I don't know if this database comes from 2000. I don't know when it comes, comes from, but uh, uh, but anyway, that's why we have that. Okay. Um, if you want a condition, we'll call it, uh, we use where. So let's, let's start reading through these queries that we're writing. So we're gonna say select all columns, select star from the employee table. Okay, where, Employee ID is greater than or equal to six, and title is equal to IT staff, order by birth date. Okay, so if this is the original thing, we're going to filter down to uh, IT staff, okay? And then we want employee IDs greater than or equal to six, um, both of these. So I think we're gonna end up selecting Robert King and Laura Callahan, I think. Yes, okay. Uh, that's that's what we got. Hired in 2004. Oh yeah, maybe that will be an indication. Okay, well the most recent person to hire was 2004. So I don't, I don't know. And I guess this is a Canadian company. All right. State A B Alberta. Oh, I guess they're all from. I don't know anything about Canada. <laughs> how many state, how many provinces and territories? Is that what we call them? They're not called states. 13? Huh? Provinces. provinces, but also territories too, right? Are they not? Like Yukon? Is that it? That's not a full. And now we got to go Canada provinces. Sorry, Canada. Provinces and territories of Canada. How many? Weeks? Ten provinces, three territories. Oh, okay. Uh, so somewhere in that brain, <laughs> thirteen was the number I had. And okay, ten provinces. All right. Um, limit. Limit. Uh, just kind of um, again. If you give it a he big query and you say, "Hey, fetch all of these results," okay, which um, read SQL query automatically kind of demands all of the results from from SQL, um, you might you might have millions of records in a SQL database and it might it might take a long time and uh, and you know your company might get mad at you. I mean they probably not. But um, but if you're just kind of testing things out, hey does this even work in the first place? 
um, you can throw in something like limit 10, okay? Limit 10, so you don't get everything. So you can say, hey, from the album table, give me just the first 10, all right? And we get the first 10 albums. From the artist table, just give me the first 10, okay? And so we can see we have different bands and artists, okay? So we can say select from the artist table. All right, all right. And so one thing you might notice, and this is kind of how uh, one of the philosophies in SQL, uh, when you set up, create a database, is you want to avoid uh, having repetition. Okay. And what I mean by that is you'll notice uh, under the album table we have balls to the wall, artist ID two. Restless and wild, these uh, artist ID 2, okay? And so if you say, well, who is artist ID 2? That is artist uh, accept, okay? So, you know, maybe we'll look up balls to the wall, album by accept, look at that, okay? Um, so here is, balls to the wall is a song itself also for its parent album, <laughs> okay? Um, this is this is what it has. Okay, released 1983, so that's a 41 year old album. Um, okay, and I don't know, I couldn't name a single song on that thing other than "Balls to the Wall," I guess. Um, but uh, but the, the but the thing is, is in the artist uh, in the album table, you don't see "Balls to the Wall" by except "Restless and Wild" by except. Okay, and the reason for that is. The SQL philosophy is that if you have information duplicated, you uh, that could lead to um, discrepancies. So, for example, somebody might write "balls to the wall" and then write the uh, artist name except all uh, with a capital A, and somebody might write it with uh, a lowercase a. Right? So you could have like <laughs> campus wire and do we capitalize the C? Do we capitalize the W? Do we have a space between them? Is are they? Is it all lowercase or something like that? How how do we, you know? Because you know, as far as like how something is capitalized, it's it's not always clear and not always um, clear how it should be done. So so instead, you just use a, an ID number. Okay, so it'll be balls to the wall by artist number two, restless and wild by artist number two, and then in the artist table. You have one listing for artist ID 2, and there's only one spelling with capital A, lowercase c-c-e-p-t, -E -P -T, okay? You know, like if somebody says, hey, the artist ID is A-C-D-C, -C, you know, somebody might put a forward slash, somebody might put a dash, somebody might put a space, okay? And if you allow, um, uh, you know, data entry to kind of go in where uh, something, you know, you have let there be rock and for those about to rock, we salute you. Um, you know, there could end up being mismatches. And then when you say, hey, search for ACDC, then, um, then, then it gets a little bit tough. So you're going to have a bunch of these things where you have uh, artist ID rather than um, the, the artist name itself, which, you know, just makes it harder for a human to read but actually makes it easier for the computer to read. So when you want to read it as a human, you have to join these tables together, okay? And so that is the uh, done with the command join. So what we're gonna do is we wanna join the artist table, uh, the album table with the artist table, okay? So we're gonna say select star, select all the columns from album joined with artists. So you're gonna see from album inner join artists. So we're basically saying join these two tables and then the resulting super table, I guess, or whatever, we want you to select all of the columns there. How do these tables get joined? Okay, We're going to match the artist ID in the album uh, table with the artist ID in the artist table. Okay, So we have album.artistID equals artist dot artist ID. So um, they use kind of dot notation to indicate a column name within a table. Okay, and so now, now we get uh, what we see, right? For those about to rock, we salute you, comes from artist ID one, which has uh, 
uh, which has the name ACDC. Balls to the wall, artist ID 2 from accept, restless and wild, artist ID 2, accept, let there be rock, artist ID 1 from ACDC, okay? And you can see, okay, well, artist ID gets duplicated here, and, and I'm not, it's not duplicated, but it just, this is from one, col one column and another column to show that these, these indeed have been matched up, okay? So uh, we can rename these columns, and, um, and here for this resulting thing, maybe we don't want all of these artist ID columns. So here I'm going to say select, we're going to select the column title, and I'm going to rename it as album title. And then I'm going to just select name and rename it as artist name. And those will be the only two columns I select, and I'm going to select them from album joined with artist on uh, album ID joined with artist ID, okay? And then so this is, you know, slightly more compact with uh, with kind of all of the same information that I wanted, okay, without the album IDs and artist ID things here, okay? All right, is that is that good? Okay, um, so you can join a whole bunch of tables uh, in that manner. Have I given you any view quiz answers yet? Okay, let me give you your first, which is the letter E. E as an elephant is our first view quiz answer. Um, Okay, uh, I just have one had one quick example here, but you know you can do quite a bit with joins. And then there's there's different kinds of joins. You have um, you know probably your most common is the inner join, which will only give you like the intersection. Like if you have values that exist in you know table A and values that exist in table B. Uh, inner join will just give you things entries that are exist in both tables, but you can do left side join, which will include all the entries from table A and only the matching entries in table B, and it will give you NAs for things where there's no match. Uh, you can do a right side join, which will give you everything from table B and just the match up the matching information from table A, and then you have the full join or outer join. Mm, okay, I got to look this up. Uh, I think it depends on which SQL language you have, which will basically give you the union of uh, of, of of the tables. Okay, but um, uh, here uh, let me do uh, a group by a group by um, combined with a summary function. And so some of your basic summary functions are going to be count, sum, or average. Um, and so you can run these um, some aggregate functions within SQL itself. You can also just kind of pull everything and then run the aggregate functions in pandas. Um, but here we'll say select. Um, we're going to get uh, uh, artist. Okay, so first let me just say from where where are we jo joining this? We're going to join album with the artist. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to group by artist ID. So we're going to form groups here. And then so now what we're, we're going to do is we're going to select the artist ID, we'll select the name of the artist, and then we are going to form, do summary information. We're going to count the album ID, okay? Now this is also, this is stupid, but just, just to show you that it can be done, we, we can average the av uh, album ID and we can also do a sum of the album ID, okay? Obviously you don't want to do averages and sums on ID numbers, but just to show you that it can it treats these as numeric values and you can calculate averages and sums you can do that okay so here um, we go through and it says okay ACDC there were two albums uh, and and you can see okay the average <laughs> the average album ID between uh, ACDC 1 and 4 gives us an average of 2.5 and then for except the average is uh, 2.5 as well um, apparently, uh, who else? Uh, Audio Slave has uh, has three albums, um, and I don't know. Do, uh, here we only see one, audio, uh, album number eight. But apparently, um, albums two and three had higher ID numbers because the sum of those things add up to two hundred ninety-two. Okay, so um, but anyway. Uh, 
in this case, count. Count of album IDs make sense, but uh, you know, average and sum probably do not. But there you go. Okay, you can do that. Um, oh, I said okay. Here I just said uh, let's just compare. All right, so I guess if I sort by artist ID, we can see these are the three albums from Audio Slave. We have the self-titled Audio Slave album, Out of Exile. And revelations, okay. Um, and revelations. When did that come out? Audio slave revelations released two thousand six. Okay. Best of Billy Cobham. <laughs> Didn't know you had a best of album. All right. I don't even know who you are. Okay. Um, conditionals on the group by. All right. Oh, so if you want to do a conditional on the group by. So, so conditions, conditionals on the tables were done with where, right? So we can do something like where employee ID was this or where this and that. But if you want to do it on uh, an aggregate thing, you have a different function or a different command, and that's having. Okay, so here we're going to say uh, basically the same thing. Uh, we're going to select artist, uh, artist, and name, and the count of the albums. How many albums did this artist produce? Um, and we're getting it from the album joined with the artist table. We're going to group by the artist ID, and then we're going to say having album count over eight. So who has over eight? Who has over eight albums? Let's find out. Okay, we had Led Zeppelin, Metallica, Deep Purple, Iron Maiden, U2. This is very kind of heavy uh, rock bias, uh, whoever created this database. Who has the most albums of all time? Most uh, studio albums by an artist? Who do you think? I think like Dolly Parton? I don't know. I have no idea who this person is. Fila Kuti? Buckethead, 302 albums? Frank Zappa? Rolling Stone had 29 albums. Gregory Isaacs? Who's that? Over 120 albums? What artist released the most albums ever? Sorry. We gotta find out. This is important. I don't know who this is. Huh? This is just some. Gregory Isaacs, Jamaican reggae artist, who released his first album in 1975, 120 albums. Between 1970 and 2010, what is that? That's uh, 45, that's like almost three albums a year. Doesn't include compilations. If you include compilations, there's 500? My goodness, all right, okay, unfortunately. Okay, all right. Well, I want to know how many albums does Dolly Parton have? Taylor Swift. 49, that's a lot, right? 222 compilation albums. Okay. Why didn't you make it on this list here? All right, well, anyway. Uh, what do we have? Okay. What did I do here? Select artist, artist ID times two. Oh, okay. So you can also do like mathematical calculations and stuff. All right. So this is this is dumb. I'm taking artist ID and multiplying it by number two. Obviously, that's a useless thing to do. But if you did need to do some kind of calculation with some kind of column here, uh, you can put that into the select statement. Okay. Um, All right, um, let me just show you a couple things. Okay, so here we have the album table, the artist table, an invoice table, uh, invoice line item, track table, and customer table. Okay, so again, the idea here is <laughs> they were running this, I, I don't know, music shop where you could sell individual tracks. And so on an order, 
uh, invoice number, invoice ID one, you might order two tracks at 99 cents each, okay? And, um, and so that would show up in your invoice, okay? That each invoice has one customer, okay? And so you have, um, you know, information regarding the invoice, like the billing address. And then, um, do we have the customer table? Uh, we have the customer table, so we have information about whoever created that customer. But also, you know, as far as the tracks that they ordered, those tracks come from a track table, which will have the, uh, the name of the song, okay? Uh, track ID 1 comes from, uh, is uh, for those about to rock, we salute you, and that comes from album ID number 1. Uh, I guess there's different kinds of media types, uh, what genre it came from, uh, information about the track itself, how many milliseconds, how many bytes <laughs> the song uh, has, the composers of the song, things like that. Okay, so um, let's try to join some of these uh, these things up, okay? Now, um, these, these tables, you know, if you want to save a little bit of typing, you can... Um, in your from statement, you can give the tables aliases, okay? So you can do uh, from the customer table joined with the invoice table, okay? So we're gonna join the customer table with the invoice table, and we're gonna call the customer table C, we'll give it an alias, and we'll give the invoice table an alias I. So it's gonna be from customer as C, joined with invoice as I, and we're gonna join the customer ID with the in, on the customer table to the customer ID on the invoice table. And then um, now that we've combined those things, we will select the customer first name, customer last name, uh, invoice ID, invoice date, invoice billing country, and then we're going to filter down to customers uh, whose cust uh, country is Brazil. Okay, and we'll just ask for the first 20 of these things. Okay, and so we have um, these people, Luis, Eduardo, Alexander, uh, and they've created multiple orders. Uh, and uh, billing country Brazil. Okay, so we have that. Um, you have a, basically kind of a, if you just want to do something like how many unique you have a bis distinct, so you can say select distinct billing country, and we have, uh, I guess, 23 countries represented in this data set. Um, all right, can you join more than two tables? Yes, you can. Uh, you need to have some kind of, some way to link one table with the other though, okay? So we are going to join the invoice table with the customer table with the employee table, okay? So uh, what is the link between them? We're gonna look at the, if you look at the invoice table, the invoice table has a customer ID, okay? The customer ID table, or the customer table, has, um, you know, we have customer ID and we get customer information. Uh, each customer is assigned a support representative. Okay, and so the support representative gives an employee number. Where is it? Oh, maybe. Okay, well, uh, we saw the employee table somewhere. <laughs> okay, um, uh, and so we're going to join um, that. Okay, so let we'll start off with the from statement. Okay, so we're going to take the invoice table. Join it with the customer table. We're going to match the customer ID on the customer table to the customer ID on the invoice table. We're going to join that result with the uh, employee table. Okay. So, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the column support rep ID in the customer table and match it to the employee ID in the employee table and then we'll order it by employee ID. And then from there, we're gonna uh, get the employee first name, employee last name, and then we're gonna do I dot star, so that just says give me all of the columns from the invoice table. Okay, so uh, here we have, we have 
uh, I guess 412 rows associated with, uh, I guess, from the invoice table that, uh, that we get. And so we have Jane Peacock, uh, employee Jane Peacock is assigned to basically all of these customers and these are all of their invoices. We have Steve Johnson assigned to all of these customers and all of their invoices. And so, so now you can do some, some information um, and, uh, and you can kind of total up, I guess you can take the invoice totals and add them up and say, all right, this, I don't think, I don't know if the store works on commissions, <laughs> but you know, oh, Steve Johnson had a big sale, $25 of, uh, songs. <laughs> all right. Um. So, all right, let's let's see if we can get through this. All right, so we're gonna here we're gonna join the employee with the customer ID with the uh, invoice table. Okay, so here we're taking uh, employee joined with customer joined with invoice, and then from here we will select um, if you want things like first name and last name from the employee table and first name and last name from the customer table. In order to kind of keep all of these straight here, um, probably uh, we should rename them. Okay, to employee first, employee last, customer first, customer last. Um, we'll select invoice ID and their total. And, uh, and so we have this, okay? And so we have, you know, Steve Johnson and Margaret Park and all of these customer first names and last names and which country they're coming from. Um, and we can do additional kind of questions here, okay? So, um, so here we can do stuff like, all right, let's look at the invoice table. Um, and uh, we want to look at the invoice date and we want it to say um, be between certain t start and end times. Okay, dealing with date and times in SQL, I mean, is um, is reasonable, but uh, you know, a lot of these things, you're going to have to kind of look up some references, right? Like date time. In SQL, uh, you don't have to you don't have to put in a server, but you got date functions uh, working with da uh, dates, and you have basically uh, stuff like this. Okay, so here we'll look at basically everything uh, between. So you, you can use a where, and uh, and you can kind of give it a, a a min and max value to search. So here we'll, we'll look for everything between. Uh, January 1, 2011 to December 31. I'm pretty sure between is inclusive, but um, uh, here, let me just, let me verify that. We'll do uh, invoice ID is between and now I'm nervous, 50 and 60. Yeah, so it is inclusive, okay, when you do between, um, but you have that, okay? All right, so uh, just some additional things that I tried was, okay, how many, um, let's count uh, um, and take the, uh, the sum on each of these things. So how many, uh, in total, how many invoices and what's the total sales in 2011, okay? Um, you can group by, say, invoice date and find out how many sales there were on each of these dates. And this is not a very exciting database. We had one or two sales <laughs> on each of these dates here. Um, I, I mean, this is all kind of artificially generated. So, um, you know, you're trying to make up orders for each of these people, okay? Um, but uh, but we have that okay. Uh, invoice line items we have that, um, and you can kind of go through, and you can say, all right, how many? Um, uh, what did I do here? Select invoice ID, count uh, invoice line item. Okay, so this is uh, which invoices had the most uh, kind of tracks that they purchased, right? So on some on invoice ID number five. This person bought um, 14 tracks, 
uh, 14 songs or something like that. So I, I uh, sorted by count here in voice line ID. Okay. Ah, uh, common table expressions. All right, do I want to get into this? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Okay, let me go ahead and give you your last two view quiz answers. Uh, C and A. C as in cat, A as in apple. Uh, C as in cat, A as in apple. Okay. Um, sometimes, so a lot of times as you're working, so in pandas and things like that, it's not uncommon to like create a summary table. You aggregate things, create a summary table, and then you take that resulting, you store that somewhere, and you take that resulting table, and you want to like do additional stuff with it. Okay. Um, you can still do that. You can run a SQL query, get back the table results. Now you have it locally on your machine, and then you can do additional work with that summary table that's been generated. Okay. Sometimes, however, you want to um, have like the SQL Server do all of that work. Okay. So within the SQL Server, you can have it kind of generate a summary table. And then once you have that summary table kind of created on the server, you can have it do further work. And then the server will send back kind of that final result, right? And so if you wanted to do something like that, that's called uh, a common table expression, okay? And so um, basically here, um, First, we're going to uh, get invoice ID and the count of the invoice ID. Basically, this this table here, where I said, um, you know, how many tracks did each invoice order? Okay, um, so we're going to select that from invoice uh, from the invoice thing, uh, grouped by invoice ID and whatever. Okay, and so this we have to pretend this intermediate table where I've kind of summarized by invoice ID and counted how many line items are on each invoice. I can imagine that I have this intermediate table on the that is up there. And so this we're going to call with, or I give this a name, okay, called invoice counts. So it's done with, basically you write the command for creating your intermediate table. You put that in this kind of parentheses group and uh, you give it a title with invoice counts as uh, this and the column names of this thing we're going to call ID and count all right and then so now that we have that then we can do select max of count as max minimum count as min from this thing and so basically I'm just going to say hey what's my maximum count what's my minimum count the maximum count was 14 the minimum count was 1 Okay. Other things you can do is you can say uh, select count, uh, count ID is how many, all right, group by counts, and you can say, okay, we had 59 orders where they ordered one song, uh, 117 orders where they ordered two songs, 59 orders where they had four songs, and so on and so forth. And you, you really see the artificially generated nature of the data, right? We have 59 orders with exactly 14 songs and something like that. So when they generated this thing, somebody said, I like the number 59. <laughs> and, uh, and I want to generate orders with, with this money, with uh, this many things. But this is kind of like, um, you know, we could, we could have just gone and created this. And then once we created this, we could have created these summary tables. We could have done that. But uh, again, you can kind of have it done on the server all directly. And then the server sends back the, uh, the information to you. Okay, what did I do here? Um, select everything from the invoice table. T is the track, A is the artist name. Okay, so here I just joined a bunch of tables together. Invoice line item, the track from the track table, the album table, and the artist table. So, so basically from the line items, you know, I said, hey, I want to know the track and the artist and, and all of this stuff. And so this is just going to give us additional information there. Okay. Um, we'll end there, um, uh, and we'll talk about some more, I guess, Python stuff in week 10, just kind of fun things. All right. Have a great weekend. We'll see, ya. see ya week 10.